well. So I had few few Wednesdays. Now I'm just trying to get it onto the live stream on YouTube. So bear with me um, as we go. Do, 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 do. Um, what about you? Have you been busy as well? Um, getting busier. Um, yeah, I, last month was quite a busy month for me. Um, mm -hmm. I did uh, quite a few inspections. That's probably on the back of um, a lot of hard work I've been doing, knocking on doors and, and, and uh, trying to, because it's a green fields, um, mm. you know, uh, that I'm cutting here because um, we're, that our, our branch is new to the region. So, right. um, so I've had to go out there and knock on doors and let people know who I am and um, what I can do and, um, you know, coupled with our uh, marketing system, um, you know, we have an e email um, system that goes out to people and, and then you get follow-ups and I do, um, I do a bit of advice for some um, agents mm -hmm. where they have a little bit of trouble with, um, let's say, the regulatory environment and mm -hmm. where they've got house they're trying to sell and um, there's some red tape um, that that's um, road blocking things or potentially is a problem for the insurance company. So um, trying to decode some of the conversations they're having with people like the council and how, how to overcome it and uh, or where to from here sort of thing. Um, the other one is, is um, get, helping them understand when they're looking at a property, whether it's um, fit to market um, mm -hmm. in the form that the, the, the vendor wants to sell it. For example, um, they've got a garage and they've um, lined it and they're saying it's a bedroom, but it's not compliant. So they can't really market it as an extra bedroom um, because that would be, you know, misrepresenting the situation because the you know, it's not compliant with council. So, yeah. That's right. Okay. Well, um, should we start, Trevor? We'll just, um, yeah. we'll start, we'll record this, and then people that would like to watch this later, they can just jump on my YouTube channel. So, um, and it's live at the moment on YouTube. So anyone that's browsing YouTube, that should pop up to them as well. So hello, everybody. My name is Sibuni Soalimova. I'm a mortgage advisor in Capital Region. I cover... Um, kept to Wellington but thanks to COVID a lot of clients have come from out of town as well. Tonight I'm joined by Trevor Garrett. He is a building inspector with Yonks and Yonks years of experience and um, he's going to talk to us today about what he does, what his uh, company does and how it can help um, buyers, sellers, anybody really, anything to do with property and what to watch out for. Trevor, um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you so much for um, last minute change last week as I had a wee emergency with my, with my wisdom, as I call it. Um, I had to take a tooth out so I couldn't really talk and um, appreciate you change, changing it to this week. So um, can you please take it away, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, and um, let's see how we can help our buyers and sellers. Hi everybody! Thanks for thanks for uh, the warm welcome. Um, so as you know, my name's Trev. Um, I'm on the Capity Coast as well, and uh, I've been um, in the building industry for 35 years. Um, built a multitude of different types of buildings, um, as well as houses. Um, done a fair bit of travelling uh, in construction as well. Did um, five years in the Middle East, working on really big jobs, but. Now I'm more looking at a more of a lifestyle change to avoid uh, going to the city every day. And um, so here I am inspecting um, people's homes. Um, yeah, so um, I've got this slideshow I'd like to share um, and uh, hopefully it'll enlighten you with a few different um, things that occur out there and uh, when we inspect homes. Uh, all these photos have taken um, this year um, and um, 98% of them on the Capiti Coast. So here we go. And it looks like we're also joined by my little 
oh, he's gone. He's gone away. I had a cat in the background. So <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Right, right. Show us your slideshow. Oh. Okay, slideshow's disappeared. Here we go. Play from start. Okay, so top tips from Red LBP, identifying issues with building materials. Um, so we've got uh, a, six different types of materials I want to share with you. Uh, I can't and see the slide show, Trevor. Cannot see it? No, can't see it. Share again, please. Okay, no problem. Let's see what's happened there. Know what's happened? It's not coming up. What needs to happen here? Did you share the screen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Something, something unusual has happened here. Uh, Hank, give us a second. Sorry about this. That's okay. Oh, I see a few more people joining us then. That's, that's Apple computers for you, Trev. <laughs> Okay, let's see what's happening here. Okay, so I've got it on my computer here. Oh, that's a pain. Let's uh, share screen. Here we go. How about this? Yes. 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 Okay, here we go. Uh, hold on. You need to reduce the Dow David. Oh, maybe that's okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Perfect. Here we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, okay. So um, we're talking about these uh, building materials that um, have failed in, um, in time. So we'll start with the first slide. Um, so this photo here is um, a, um, a plumbing product um, that's called Duck's Quest. Um, now, this, this stuff has a severe history of failure. Um, a number of insurance companies will not um, cover you for this product. So it's quite important that, uh, you know, when you're looking at a pre-purchase inspection that this sort of thing is identified and, and uh, an appropriate um, plan and put in place to, um, to remove and replace it. So the faults with these things is that the, um, the joins fail and, um, and split and start leaking. Um, you can see here, the, it's clearly labelled there, um, Quest Ducks Polybutylene. Um, so, yeah, so it's quite, it's not that hard to identify, but um, if it's hidden in, a, in walls, um, you obviously can't see that there, and we find it in um, ceiling spaces and under floors. Now, this product was um, used throughout the 70s and 80s, so it was in place for a long time before people started to realize that it was um, failing. Um, yeah, and yeah, as I said, that's the label. Um, the next one here is um, MDF reveal. So um, there was a time in the 80s and 90s where custom was, was used on the reveals of windows. And unfortunately with um, single glazed windows, you get a lot of condensation in winter with the heating and cooling the night and day, and there's a lot of moisture present. And so what happens is the, um, the MDF expands and blows up. And as you can see there, there's quite a pronounced um, bend in the, in the material because it's swollen. So very susceptible to water. Um, they don't use it anymore, but, um, and I've seen homes with this product um, fail very badly quickly and others that can last a long time but it's again it's one of those things you want to look out for because um, you don't want to buy into a big lemon uh, here's another um, shot of it you can see there that the architrave is also uh, made of mdf 
and the water has soaked into that. And you can really see how much it's swollen. And that's just from um, soaking up water. So, yeah. And down below, if you look down at the skirting, you can see there's a bit of swelling there as well. So the water has, has um, overflowed and just dripped down and gone right down to the bottom. So it's, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's something you need to be aware of. Um, now, this one here, concealed guttering. Now, this 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 product here is quite, um, quite problematic if it's not maintained. You can see there is a bit of grass growing out of that bit of guttering. Um, and um, so the concealed gutters, if they're not cleared regularly, they overflow inside. So, so again, it's a product that, that uh, is not commonly used anymore. Um, and then if we look at another, the next photo, now this is the, exactly the same joint, but um, from an angle. And you can see here on the left, um, the polystyrene cladding, and above is the, the plaster system that sits over it. And you can see there within the circle, that's actually timber framing. And that's been exposed like that since the day this building was constructed. I inspected this house only mm, one or two months ago. And you can, um, and so, um, you know, that's that's just flooding straight in, straight into the house. And um, and the people couldn't understand what was wrong. And they certainly didn't um, look at the house close enough when they purchased it. And um, so now they're looking down the barrel of quite a hefty bill to uh, correct this problem. Trevor, what's the um, age of this house? When was this built? What's this the, this house was built in the 2000s. So in that period of time when, um, you know, the government made a lot of changes to the building regulations and, and the laws and um, realised they'd made a lot of mistakes and they've since corrected it now. But yeah, it was in the 2000s. Yeah. Um, so this this product here, silver foil insulation, electrocution hazard. So this product has not failed in terms of its performance uh, in construction, but um, there has been a number of electricians and home handymen who have inadvertently electrocuted themselves um, by uh, allowing a wire to contact the, um, the product and it conducts. So, um, so through the electrical regulations, they've just said uh, no more. Um, you can't install any new stuff. And if it becomes damaged or starts to fall down, as you can see in the background of this photo, um, you have to, you're compelled to take it down. I don't think the R value is very high, so they don't perform that well anyway. So, yeah, it's just another one of those things to watch out for. Now, this here is, an, is a very similar product. This is called um, Sisolation. And this too was used back in the day. Um, it's more of a, a sheet material uh, you get in rolls, and that also um, is an electrocution hazard. So, yeah, yeah, when you get people to re insulate your house, they normally, um, part of their normal work, they just cut that stuff out and get rid of it. All right. Ah, the old weather side. So, this product here. Um, weather side, it looks very similar to fibre cement board, but it's actually um, a um, reconstituted wood. It's very fine chips all glued together. And uh, this was in the 70s and 80s when I was an apprentice. Um, I used to do perk jobs in the weekends and reclad houses for people. I went up one whole street one time. I must have done about eight houses um, one after the other after the other and um, uh, yeah I used to do them in the weekends for a bit of extra money and uh, so what happens with this product is this, this I've got another photo here you can see there it's um, the water gets in from the bottom and then works its way up and it just swells and swells and swells and then just becomes a mushy mess and then of course once once it's um, failed like that, the water gets into the house and then starts to damage your framing and, um, you know, wet, cold, damp, and, uh, yeah, not very happy at all. Um, yeah. Um, and, yeah, and you'll notice, too, the swelling on this product, because it's wood-based like the previous MDF window photos, uh, it swells just the same. Um, so 
reconstituted wood products typically are not very um, durable in, in a damp environment. So, yeah, so that, and, and that's the evidence of it. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. So, um, so that's just a short, short set segment of, of um, failed materials. Um, we like to think we make our um, property reports easy um, and we tend to not sensationalise problems, but identify them and, and help you with a where to from here solution based um, reporting so that you, you know, not only do you get, oh, well, these are a problem, here's a step forward as a solution. That's that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Trevor. Um, yeah, no worries. On the weather side, I quickly had a question. How can yeah. um, people tell apart weather side versus fibre cement? Because on the outside, they look similar. Yes, they do. They do look very similar. Um, but as you can see there, um, the, weather, the weather side is um, the, the tempered hardboard is a very dark brown colour. Um, so if it's starting to fail, you'll see the paint come away and it won't be, you just brush your finger across it, you'll see the darker colour below and you'll know um, straight away it's not fibre cement. So you, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's not that hard to, to pick out. Um, but, um, and it was supposed to have been got rid of many, many years ago, but there's some people um, when they did a payout to um, all of the affected owners, they took the money and didn't do anything on, with the house. That's and right, so, that's right. The reason I'm laughing is because one of the properties I owned um, in Palms to North, it had the weather side and we didn't yeah. know until we were selling, I believe. So we bought it okay. We didn't really do much investigation. And then when we were selling, um, it came up there was weather side and they said to us, oh, well, you know, the owner should have got a payout to change it, but they never did. Yeah. Um, mm. So they just got a payout and they just kept the credit. Yeah. So um, interesting. And um, in terms of what sort of reports you provide, can you run through like um, are yeah. they com comprehensive 50 pages? Are they verbal? What sort of reports do you do? Okay, so we yeah, so we do a, a range of different reports. Um, the most common one is a pre-purchase report. Um, we do them for vendors or um, um, potential purchasers. Um, they are um, quite comprehensive. They they usually sit between forty and fifty pages, um, and they're broken into um, key um, structural areas, um, the roof system. Uh, the roof space, exterior cladding, um, uh, exterior um, joinery, uh, interior finishes, and the foundations. Um, and they're, they're broken down into smaller pieces within those um, key headings. And, you know, we really hone in on, on all the detail. Um, our work is um, modelled after um, NCDS 4306, and uh, that is a New Zealand standard for um, property inspections. Um, it is a voluntary standard. Um, so there is no hard regulations for our industry. So it's something to be aware of. Um, you do need to be happy that the person that you're engaging to do your inspection actually knows what they're doing and um, because they, they, you don't require qualification. Um, and that's where our company is that where the name comes from, Red LBP. We are licensed building practitioners. So um, not only are all our guys um, vastly experienced in construction, we have a license from the government to say that we do actually know what we're talking about. Wow. Um, so anyone can just come in. Like I could just anybody. come in and do a anybody. building report. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so you do need to be able to um, ask some questions and, and figure out between one to the next um, whether guys actually know what they're talking about. Um, now, the other reports we do, healthy home reports, um, where we, uh, for a, um, a landlord, go and have a look at a home and um, have a look at how um, well it's performing for insulation and heating and drafts and things like that. Um, so that's another thing we do. We do do um, verbal reports um, for people who are like uh, last minute.com auction day sort of thing. 
Um, so if we get in there a couple of hours before the auction, we can give a verbal report, which is um, we record it as a normal um, um, inspection. Um, we can give a verbal on the spot there. And then if the uh, person decides that they've purchased it and they want to um, obtain the report, they just pay the normal top up between the verbal and the written report. And um, yeah, they go away happy. Right. Um, it's it's a way of speeding things up a little bit. If you've made it, making a last minute decision, we would much prefer, of course, that um, you don't buy a home in a hurry because it's a, it's a big thing and you should do it um, at, in, your, in your time rather than rush it. But yeah, we can step up and bend to that sort of um, situation. Right. Um, yeah. I've got a couple, couple of people here asking some questions. So um, oh, yeah. one of the easy one, it says, um, do you have branches in Auckland? So you mentioned yes, the franchise. Yes, we do. Yes. So, yeah. so we're a franchised organisation. Um, we've got three guys uh, in Auckland, um, Central West, and another guy in the Rodney area, slightly north of um, Auckland. Of course, they're at level four at the moment, so those guys are twiddling their thumbs at home, um, wishing they were out working. Um, uh, I'm in the lower North Island, and we have guys in most um, cities in the South Island. And um, what's the cost? But I think you said it's on the website as well, isn't yeah, it? It is. Our, our pricing is quite simple. Um, up to a 100 square metre home is 450, including GST. Uh, up to 200 is 550. And over 200 uh, is 650. And if you get a little bit above, uh, you know, um, that size is probably a price on um, application because we've um, it's hard to tell when you have a home that has quite a lot of bathrooms because a significant part of our inspection process is looking at kitchens, bathrooms, toilets, um, because they are um, parts of the home that can leak on the inside. Um, obviously, we're looking at, at the exterior. Um, and probably the last um, inspection we do, we do weather tightness inspections. Now, these are just like a normal um, pre-purchase, but we go to a lot more detail. If there's a home, has a question mark over it, um, or it's been built to the era that, that that has, you know, typically told us that, that it could be a leaky home or the type of construction and that sort of thing. Those those reports are a little bit more expensive than a than than a normal pre-purchase, um, and that's really reflects the time and effort that we we look quite closely at at um, the exterior to make sure that it's um, it is dry or identify what's going on there. Um, yeah. Great, thank you so much. I've just dropped a couple of links there as well for um, our listeners in the chat so they can um, follow those links. I also have another um, person wanting to ask a couple of questions, if that's okay with you, Trev. Yep, 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 go, um, go ahead. Yep, Julia, take it, take it away. Just unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, actually it's Luke speaking. Oh, I've Luke. stolen Julia's laptop. Hello, Luke. Hi, uh, th thanks for your time, Trevor. I had um, two questions. Um, then one of them might not be in your wheelhouse, but uh, it's worth giving it a try. Um, mm. The first one was: Do you do any sort of um, reports on, say, <coughs> subsidence with with housing? Um, so subsidence is uh, engineering. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the answer is no. Um, we, when part of our, but our, part of our normal inspection process is, is um, we do do um, floor level checks, yes. and um, and and often when subsidence occurs, uh, there are other indicators that may be present on a home. Um, for example, um, back in the day, you know, more than fifty years ago. Homes would often have a downpipe that discharged straight onto the ground and yeah. um, not into a system. And often homes would subside in that corner. And I, in fact, I inspected a hundred year old home um, a few months ago and one corner of the house had sunk. And 
to this day, that house has a downpipe that's not connected to anything. And then, so we could say, well, um, with reasonable confidence that the reason for that subsidence is just that, that water um, constantly hitting that corner of the house and, and mm. making it sink. Um, you know, if it's something else a little bit more significant, uh, there could be a number of reasons. Uh, Capity Coast, um, we do a little bit of subsidence in some of the older properties because um, we have a lot of peat within the sand dunes. Yeah. And um, there was not a lot of understanding about the civil engineering required for subdivisions, um, you know, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago in older um, on the Capity Coast. So there are homes in the area that, that are sinking and subsiding, and that's basically because they've been built on top of peat. Um, that's mm. been all corrected now, um, and, and that doesn't occur anymore. But, yeah, that, so those sorts of things we, we can identify and generally say um, what, what could be the reasons why, but um, often it may end up a recommendation that um, a suitably qualified engineer um, reviews the property. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, um, the second question was just like I said, probably not in your wheelhouse, but um, just generally speaking, as with somebody who's considering changing the roof at the moment, are there any sorts of roof roofing choices that people should avoid in the current marketplace? Um, I don't know about the current marketplace. Um, all tradesmen are busy in New Zealand. All mm. trades. And um, so um, you need to probably set your expectations well and not be surprised that you have to wait a long time. Um, in terms of performance of products, the, the, a common mistake is um, getting the right, wrong type of material for the pitch of the roof. Um, certain products do not like to be laid um, too flat. And um, so you need to be, um, quite certain that um, you're getting the right advice and selecting the right product for the pitch of the roof. That's quite important. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Trevor. I appreciate your no time. No worries. Thank you. Um, I um, look. I also did the um, webinar, but it was in Russian with an engineer a couple of weeks ago. I am trying to get an engineer on board as well. So um, if that's something of interest to you, um, do continue to follow me <laughs> so we can, we can get this um, sorted and across. But um, Trevor, appreciate your time. Thank you so, yeah. so much. We'll keep it nice. No and, and um, let's get together in a couple of months time again and just maybe tackle something else that you could yep. um, this recording will be available on my YouTube channel and um, people can go back and actually look. I think you've given some amazing um, examples of what can go wrong or what to look out mm. for. So um, that's been, I mean, yeah. to me, and I've been in this industry for quite some time now, but to me, it's still gold. Every time I see examples like this, it's just, it just really helps. So when people look at open homes or they look at those listings, um, I try to point their attention to the listings as well, that, hey, there's something yeah. wrong with that window frame or the door yeah. is a bit um, wonky. So just keep, yeah. Yeah, keep an yeah, eye. Yeah, no, that's, that's the key thing. If it's, um, you know, if it's the biggest purchase of your life and, you, and you've got concerns, you know, get good advice. Um, there's plenty of reasonable companies out there. Do you due diligence on selecting an inspector just because they're helping you do your due diligence on selecting a home so get the right guy and um you know enjoy the uh, lifestyle in your new home beautiful. Oh, good thank you very much beautiful thank you so much Trevor. um have a fantastic night and yay for level two Woo! yeah hooray. A, a little bit sorry Auckland folks <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that thank you right on so um i'm gonna end the meeting now <laughs>